Thanks for staying with us. You're watching TVC Breakfast. All right, now to our next leg of discussion. Civil society groups have asked the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the FCC, to disclose the identity of the religious sect and others laundering money for terrorists. The FCC had earlier mentioned that uh, during the course of investigation, they traced the religious sect indulging in this criminal activity. And while warning those criminals, the CSOs say if the EFCC had done its investigation and identified the religious group, then there was no need to hide its identity. Joining us now uh, in the studio for this conversation is lawyer, is also a social development advocate, Olutubo Shifura. We also have joining us via Zoom from the United Kingdom, lawyer and public affairs analyst, Daniel Boala. Gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us. Mr. Boala, Mr. Shifura in the good studio. Morning. It's good to have you join thank us. You. Uh, let's begin uh, from Zoom. Uh, Daniel Boala joining us, uh, you know, from the United Kingdom. What are your thoughts on this issue? It has, um, you know, raised up a lot of uh, reactions. But what do you think really about this revelation by the ESCC? Well, uh, thank you for having me and good morning to your viewers. I think it's a, a long time coming because I recall that... Uh, some few years ago, two or three years ago, when uh, the government of the United Arab Emirates uh, made a disclosure of uh, individuals and corporate bodies that were involved in terrorism financing, uh, they did what they had to do at their end, and they submitted names of Nigerians who were involved. And I think there are about um, either six or eight Nigerians involved in terrorism financing. And they made the recommendation, but uh, we have not actually seen or heard any decision that the government has taken in terms of uh, uh, prosecuting them or even doing a further investigation to bring this fact to the Nigerian people as to whether the government believed or whether the government acted on the intelligence that was shared by the government of the United Arab Emirates. And I think that this is one of the reasons why, if you look around the country, you will see that there are lots of terrorism-related activities that are going unchecked. Because even this kidnapping that you're seeing is captured in Section 24, I think, of the Terrorism and Prevention Act. And it is quite clear that act of kidnapping constitutes terrorism. And the punishment is that if in the process of kidnapping, so you, somebody's life is lost, then the, uh, the, the accused is going to be uh, sentenced to death. But if the person hasn't, has not been killed or somebody has not died as a result of the kidnapping or hostage taking, then it will amount to, I think, to result in 24 years or so. We have not seen any of these actions by the law enforcement agency. So it has emboldened people to be involved in terrorism-related offenses, which now uh, kidnapping has been captured by the Terrorism Prevention Act as also part of terrorism. Mm. Well, uh, still, still with you, uh, Mr. Abola. It is, it is very. Is it not important to consider uh, the the fallout of this if the EFCC decides to go ahead and you know decides to mention the names, uh, the the names of the people behind this terrorism financing, owing to the fact that they said some people believe that okay, it's the Christian organization. Other, be, other, other others believe that is the Muslim organization, uh, which, for instance. Maybe if it goes the other way around, they might say probably because of the joint Muslim Muslim ticket, and then they are trying to instigate other people against the Christian, you know, the Muslim Muslim ticket, which you vehemently stood against in the general election. How do you see it? Well, I, I do know, first of all, the government at the moment has not demonstrated in its conduct and affairs uh, anything that suggests that they give preference to the Muslims over and above the Christian. I think that uh, the government of President Bola Metinibu has proved a lot of naysayers wrong. Me in particular, because I thought at the beginning that uh, probably the same faith ticket will have impact negatively on the interests of the Christian community. I haven't seen that at the moment. And so uh, I do not think that any act of government uh, against criminal elements in Nigeria can be given any interpretation. But you, you have to separate between President Bola Metinibu as the president of the country and the chief executive officer under Section 5 and then agents of the government of the federation such as EFCC who are supposed to act independent of the president. That means when a course is to be taken, they don't have to wait until the president says go or don't go. They are to act in the interest of Nigerians. They are to act to prevent crime. They are to act to arrest crime and they are to act 
to uh, you know, bring about a deterrence. Now, it doesn't matter whether it is a Christian community or Muslim community. The law that we all you know, observe in Nigeria does not look at all those considerations. There might be political inclination, but that is at the level of people who are in political offices, not law enforcement. Law enforcement strictly deals with crime. And I do not think that it is healthy for EFCC to conceal without disclosing not just the names of churches or individuals that are involved, but to even go ahead and arrest the fact that you even say there are churches and monks and you have not made effort to arrest is indicting on yourself. Usually when it comes to crime, from when you detect and identify a crime, you swing into action either to pre prevent the crime or where the crime has been committed, you then arrest those who have committed the offense and charge them to court. So EFCC ought to have gone ahead, made the arrest, charge them to court before anything political can come afterwards. But not that you keep you know, saying that you have identified, you have investigated, investigation has shown A, B, and C, and you've not acted. It is this kind of things that give room for the peer pressure and the pressure of the society to then come on it and then stop. Crime is crime. And crime against the state undermines the national security of the state. So it has no correlation. And for since this nation has come to be, I've never seen a police station that say they stop arresting because the person is a Muslim or the person is a Christian or the person is a Christian, but the, uh, the president or the governor is a Muslim. No, don't. Those considerations are not for law enforcement. They allow politicians to play politics, like the way people are playing politics with our, our economic problem in the country. But law enforcement is about detection, prevention, and then arrest of criminals and then prosecuting them. All right, let's put you on hold, uh, Mr. Boala, and come back to the studio to get uh, the thoughts of a lot of Thanks for joining us uh, again. But what are your thoughts, really? ESSC uh, has come back to clarify its position, saying it didn't say anything about a church or mosque uh, being indicted in this revelation about 7 billion naira traced. He said it was a sect, a religious sect. But does it, you know, exonerate them from, you know, the pressure? on them now to reveal the identity of this sect, whatever it is. All right, not taking anything away from um, the diligence and um, duty of EFCC. I think this time around they've just uh, boxed themselves into a corner by themselves because um, you came out and said you found a religious sect um, laundering money for terrorist and terrorism-related activities, and you left it like that. You have given room for speculation. You have given room for mischief. And then they came back again a few days later to say that um, um, there was no particular person mentioned. And so that, I think that gave room for further noise that, come on, what are you doing? You're just embellishing this thing. Look at the situation in the country. Terrorism is rife. Terrorism is almost the order of the day. The government is struggling, people are struggling, and here you are, you said you have found something, then you are afraid to mention the name of the person or group, and then you are dilly-dallying and giving us further room to speculate and, and also create fear amongst the people. Because right now, the, the, the gist in town is that, okay, it's this church, it's that church, it's this mosque, it's this people, and I think for... Basically, what the EFCC is supposed to do is to go after those people. They said in one of their press releases that um, they, they, there's an injunction or there's a court order preventing them from going ahead, and they've appealed. All those things, they look suspicious. We can't find anything. And for the first time, I, though my faith is not shaking in EFCC, but for the first time, I think they're on the back foot. For something this serious, I don't think they have put in enough to help the people understand what's going on. Because if you have identified someone, I mean, look at us, we're three or four here. I can identify you, then mention this is the person. Now, you may want to say, okay, you may want to look at it from the angle that, okay, well, if you mention public outcry or anything, but what have you done legally to make sure that these persons are being, are being apprehended and made to face the law? That's basically what we want to know. If you tell me this is Mr. A is the one in charge, I can't really do anything from the confines of my own home rather than 
my fears will not be heightened. That, hey, see this person I, I think is upright or I think is a religious leader. Look at what he's doing. You have created more fear. But go after this person. Except the EFCC is telling us that some people are above the law. And then, like Mr. Boala stated earlier, that we saw what happened a few years ago when the UAE came back and said some people were involved. Nothing has been said so right. far. L l kindly hold that thought. We will continue. Gentlemen, please um, bear with us. We will continue our conversation on this topic when we return from this break. Stay with us. For school? Yes. My champs. They use energy at school. I know because imagine the energy they may have used up to return home this transform every day. Your champs need nourishing energy. Give them the new and improved Mellow at breakfast. It has nutrients that support energy release to help champs get the most out of their active days. Mellow! Thank you very much for staying with us. You're still watching TVC Breakfast. We've got Daniel Boala uh, sharing his thoughts, uh, joining us uh, via Zoom from the UK, uh, speaking about this latest revelation uh, by uh, the EFCC regarding uh, the, those laundering money for terrorists. Well, he, that's the EFCC chairman, has indicted a particular religious sect, identity yet unknown. Uh, we also have in the studio another lawyer, uh, Olutubo Soshifuora also sharing uh, his thoughts on the controversy. Yes, uh, uh, let, me, let me stay with you, uh, Mr. Oshifuora. Could it be that the EFCC is trying to tread carefully, um, not to go the way of what they have been accused of uh, being, you know, doing media trials? Because most times we tend, to, we tend to hear them mention certain people, go after certain profile, you know, uh, high-profile figures. Um, in, in the country, and then at the end of the day, we probably do not see anything coming out of it. Could it be that they are just trying to do their work diligently in the background before they come out to, to, to the open about who, who is being fingered? Well, if that's the aim, then they shouldn't have come out in the first place to say that. If you, knew, if you know what you're doing is investigation, then perfect your investigation before you come out to the public, because what they have said is half information. And if there's anything half information does, it gives room for speculation and it creates fear. I mean, everybody's afraid. There's kidnapping everywhere. We know of certain sects that are out to foment trouble for the nation. They've been at it for a while. And then here you are coming to tell us that, okay, fine. We have found some people. We have traced some monies to them. Now, so for me, it seems like the attention is more on the money than the people involved. That's basically what this has done. Now, so for me, what I expect is that, okay, trying to hold the money is one side. The people you have found culpable in this regard, you need to charge them to court. You need to let the people know, okay, if you don't want to tell them, if you don't want to tell the populace, you don't want to tell the nation, then which you have an obligation to do in the first place. You also have the obligation, it's under the EFCC Act to pursue things like this when you find funds, you know, um, for terrorism-related yes. activities. So for me, why the EFCC is on the back foot and not going after this person is creating a bit of suspicion. And then it also gives us the impression that the commission is... is I'm, I'm trying to find the best word to use now. The commission is making some people look like they're untouchables. Because if you have identified them in the course of your investigation, then the next thing is to go ahead and prosecute these people and also find a way to make sure that these funds are being clamped down. If, if, if they've gotten a court order to stop you from investigating, there are other ways you could go about it. So I don't think they are lost for ideas, but I want to believe that maybe they are taking their time. But if that was the case, then they shouldn't have come out with this. Now that they have, then the onus is on them to step up their game and... and, and, and make the people, let the fear in the heart of everybody go. Because right now you have created more fear, and with this silence and inactivity, um, people are getting more afraid of what's going on. So they need to step up, and also their reputation is at stake. 
in this regard. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and let's come back to Daniel Boala now. You've listened to uh, your colleague here, uh, you know, speaking about uh, perhaps the intention of EFCC is just to recover the money and maybe they are not all out for uh, prosecution. And then there is also the matter that the sect in question has gotten wind of, um, you know, the intention of EFCC and has gone on uh, to get a, an injunction from the court, which uh, kind of is, is stops uh, EFCC from, from doing its job. W what do you make of this? I, I think that uh, EFCC, the whole uh, conundrum now, uh, uh, portrays EFCC in bad light. Yeah, it shows that their investigative strategy is tardy. You know, they need to depart from their previous modus operandi, where they focus more on media than on actual work. You see, because if you look at the record of EFCC in terms of successful prosecution, mm. the highest number of the prosecution they have is all these Yahoo Yahoo boys. And in most cases, these Yahoo Yahoo boys will be told, if you plead guilty, we are going to limit your, we are going to reduce your, the, we are going to reduce the charges, you know, so you don't get uh, maximum offense uh, charges in the, in, in, in the charge sheet. So, but, but in, if we, for EFCC to perform to its fullest potential, EFCC first, if you look at the Terrorism and Prevention Act, mm -hmm. the role of law enforcement is that of investigation. And so if your investigation is strong, then that person would be convicted or that organization or individuals would be convicted because you have watertight investigation. And the FCC is good at that. So I don't know how you are very effective in investigation, but you decided to then go ahead. And then, uh, in fact, it might be, if you ask me, two things happen with what the FCC did. One, you blackmail churches and mosques. Because that's a generic term. You put everybody under suspicion. And then number two, you gaslight the people. You know, you try to create the politicization of what you're doing. The minute you say A, B, and C, we've investigated and found that A, B, and C, and there is no, no commensurate action, then definitely you have given room for that A, B, and C to either hide the evidence, to move up the evidence, or arrange themselves, or even you have even, in fact, given them the opportunity to even go to the court and get order restraining you. So some people might even go to the extent of thinking EFCC did that in order to untwist itself from carrying out its work. If you look at uh, the rest of the world, what they do is that the television or media, whatever you see, breaking news, the law enforcement have arrested A, B, and C of a suspected, uh, suspicious or suspected commission of a crime of C, D, and E. The action, the action has to be there because before you ever have to come out to say this has happened, you are expected to have at least, if not concluded your investigation, but the investigation must be substantial enough to give you the lead to the arrest. Then when you make the arrest, you can then further the investigation to, 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 to determine what I call the cobwebs, individuals that are involved in the commission of this crime. So EFCC failed in this regard. If you are to score them, you will say they failed in this regard. Secondly, you ask the question whether their intention is just to recover the money and don't prosecute the people. There is no law that supports them for that. When a crime is committed, the only ground on which you can decide not to proceed is when there is a plea deal, which means you would have arrested them, you would have charged them to court, or yes, you would have charged them to court, and they reach a plea deal. If you look at the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, even the plea, um, a plea bargain, sorry, I say plea deal, even the plea bargain, is to be supervised by court. You cannot arbitrarily say we have reached a plea bargain with A, B, and C because the state might be cornered, the state might be skewed, you know, the state might be gamed in the process. So the way you determine a crime is afoot, you are to take necessary action to prevent it. Detection, prevention. So you be announcing it without taking action has not prevented. You merely detected, but it has not prevented. And if, when you detect and then tell the public you have given the, 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 the crime committers the opportunity to even prepare their defense ahead of you, get an order to stop you, or in fact to move the evidence so that by the time you make the arrest, you don't have anything substantial. EFCC has failed in this regard, in my view. Right, but you know, quickly, just a follow up now. Does it make it better, this clarification by EFCC, that it wasn't referring to a church or mosque, in line with your? Um, previous remarks about, you know, gaslighting uh, these religions, it says it only meant a religious sect. So then how did the inf information or report come about in the media space? 
because the way it was reported, it was reported as though it was a statement or it was a report from EFCC. Now, I know that EFCC work with media. Oftentimes, when an accused is invited to EFCC headquarters, even while he's there, you see breaking news, the man is in detention, and you wonder why. I know the strategy that law enforcement sometimes use in order to manage things. You see, the political interference, the law presumes something like that could happen. That's why there is the office of the attorney general, who is the supervisor of the EFCC itself, right? So EFCC have no business saying we have discovered this without taking action. When you have taken the necessary action, if political exigency warrants that these things will not be proceeded further, the Attorney General can exercise his powers under Section 174 to either institute the action or discontinue. So EFCC may have arrest, identified, arrested, and taken them to court, but then maybe there is the religious inclination to it, there's religious pressure from here and there, and the president feels that he needs to manage the public peace. The president might ask the attorney general to go and discontinue because there is a political solution that is being built. But you cannot, at the stage of EFCC, be doing the job of the attorney general. Yours is to detect, yours is to prevent, yours is to arrest, and then you move on. If you, in fact, look at the Terrorism Prevention Act, which I believe is the extant substantive law that is guiding the uh, 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 all acts of terrorism, it gives the Office of the National Security Advisor as a coordinating office of all the law enforcement. The Office of the Attorney General is the administration of the Terrorism and Prevention Act. And all other law enforcement, the duty of investigation and arresting of those individuals. Mm. Do your job so you don't have to put the masses in a situation where they will be speculating. Like my brother said, it gives room for speculation. It gives room for fear because everybody now is afraid. For well, people who go to, because Nigeria is a religious society, people who go to church or mosque, you are already creating an impression in the minds of the people. It could be this, it could be that. That is the suspicion we are talking about. Mm. But when you detect, make the arrest. That's why there is provision for bail. When they arrest you, you come, you they collect the preliminary evidence. They say, somebody admit him to bail. Anytime we need you, you will come. Or before we charge you. But do the job. Do the job. Don't make the noise. And That's right. from the, before yeah. EFCC debunk what was shared, it took about 24 hours or more. That, again, to me, is a problem. From the instance you feel a report went out, which was not a reflection of what you did, you can issue immediately a press release that it is not so, so, and so. But now, whether it is you didn't say religious body or you say religious body, you have admitted there is a commission of a crime by element or organization that relates to terrorism. What have you done about that? Right, Mr. Bola, uh, let me just co uh, come to the studio with uh, Mr. Oshi Fuwara. You know, the call has been growing, you know, to the president to prosecute the sponsors of terrorism in Nigeria, especially with the allegations of um, the former, the allegations rather, that the former chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim, Atahiru uh, Ibrahim, was eliminated because of his stance against terrorists and their finance and their sponsors and all of that. So if this allegation was anything to go by, do you not feel that... Uh, the current agencies that are fighting terrorism, fighting those the sponsors of uh, you know t terrorism as well, are also trying to tread carefully. I'll still you know go back to my earlier question, or so as not to also put themselves in harm's way. All right, now let, let let's do it this way. You know the law on terror. I mean <clears throat> prevention of terrorism is complete. If you look further down in the section for the law, the extant one is 2022. Terrorism Prevention Act. It says that um, if where someone is arrested and um, alleged and arrested or even prosecuted for terrorism related activities, the person has a defense for himself. And he can go ahead and say that, okay, fine. Let's say the funds, I mean, let's narrow it down to what we're discussing. The funds they say they have traced to this religious sect. If the religious set comes out and say in their defense that, come, this funds is not for what you perceive or what you think it is, and they can explain themselves, it's there in the law, that then that will be a defense for them, and the defense can fly in the face of the law. So being afraid of going after someone, you know, sometimes the, the law allows for arresting based on suspicion. Now, so if you feel that uh, these activities of this person, I suspect this thing, you could go ahead and make that arrest 
and then go ahead and prosecute based on that suspicion. The law gives you that ample opportunity. Now, but also the law gives the person room for defense. So there are instances where you can actually pick someone. You can say that you can flag funds. Because if you, I've, I've had clients that um, they were arrested abroad for, you know, carrying more than the necessary amount. The first thing that comes to the mind of the agent arresting you is that, what are you doing with so much cash in your possession? So they flag you based on the Terrorism Act or the Money Laundering Act, and, and that's in order. At the end of the day, I've had funds returned to clients. I've had funds returned to companies by these agencies. But so, the, damage, the damage to the reputation... There is no damage. There is no damage. See, see, security, it's, it's... See, you cannot play down the situation in the country. And if you see that they have the right, they have acted within the law. Now, if they have gone to court based on this suspicion, it's not every case you win in court. It's not, it's not about winning now. It's about the fact that the security of the nation is what you have prioritized. And you have gone based on this thing. You have flagged these funds. And then by the time you find out, okay, it's not related, and the people come up with a definite defense in that position, then you can allow them to go. There is no damage to your reputation. It's just everybody's being careful. It happens in saner crimes. So we're not an exception. And because of what is happening on the daily, people literally live in fear. I can tell you for free that I have decided, we sat down in my office and we looked at it and come. There are some courts outside Lagos that we won't go again. We have to find people in those jurisdictions because of what's happening. I can't put people under me in harm's way. I can't put myself, will I be looking for ransom? For this. So these are things, people are now apprehensive. People are literally afraid to do their daily work. Now, so at the end of the day, if the EFCC has gone ahead to do, to act in this regard, there is no damage done to anybody or any sect. The damage being done is to everyone's psyche. Now, because you have created a ball and nobody can figure out what's going on. And you have also created a situation where it looks like, ah, well, some people are above the law, we can't touch them. Now, if you, if, if, if you drive that down further into people's mind, then you have created anarchy. So if, if there's anything ESCC needs to do now, they need to step up, name these persons, or prosecute them. By the time you prosecute them, from the court, we will know who and who is involved. And remember what was said earlier, that there was an intel from the UAE. We never had anything till today. So that shows you that definitely, and some people were picked up over there, prosecuted and jailed over there. But on our own side, nothing has happened. So are you now saying that these people can't be touched or the government doesn't care about terrorism? That's the impression being made here. So we have to, if the security of citizens and our properties is, is at the heart of the government, then I think it's time to step out. And this is, this is a classic case for them to actually um, help the people understand what's going on. Right. Uh, Daniel Boala, surely this must be a burden. Uh, I wonder how you uh, want the Tinubu administration to diffuse itself of this burden um, when you talk about if indeed we are serious about winning this war uh, against terrorism. This is um, one issue that many governments in the past have skirted around. The, nothing has been achieved. Former AGF Malami also spoke about this, and we, we, we didn't get to see the names of these people said to be sponsoring terrorism. Now it's the turn of the Tinubu administration. Uh, what are your expectations? Malami created the problems because uh, when Malami w uh, went quick to announce that uh, they shared intelligence with UAE, he didn't act on it. Now, UAE went further to release the full list of individuals and entities that they arrested with their countries. And you will see the names of Nigerians, identifiable, recognizable individuals, their names. Nothing has happened. But in other countries that were affected, such as Russia, or, um, Syria, Iran, Iraq, uh, Yemen, all these other places, they took action, including the United Arab Emirates. And then, again, this is why some people feel that political leaders sometimes get unnecessary pressure from those they appoint and entrusted with responsibility. If, for example, i just give you an example. EFCC swung to action, took certain measures. 
you will hear in the media, they will say President Tinubu is committed, is dogged, and the rest. If EFCC is slacking, then they will think as if President Tinubu is the one that is slacking. That's why I have been a very strong proponent of those who have appointment. Don't betray the trust. Do the job. Let me tell you something about terrorism. Terrorism is one of those crimes that has a global uh, presence. If you look at the Terrorism and Prevention Act, the subject matter, there it says internationally protected persons. When you come under terrorism, there is no nation of the world that subscribes to this global convention on anti-terrorism that would not share intelligence with you for the purposes of dipping it in the board. Because terrorism financing does not stop in one jurisdiction. Usually there is a wiretap. Money moved from here to the other side. Crime to be committed there, which has consequences here. It is a sect from certain parts of the world that has ideology. So terrorism fighting is a global fight. And so no nation must be seen to be lackluster or slacking in that fight. And kidnapping, an example, and another example, which is now the bane of our society, is a terrorist, terrorist activities. What effort are we making? All this time you've been hearing kidnappers arrested. Have you ever seen any kidnapper taken to court, apart from Evans and a few other ones? Everything fine. That's why police too must be checked to see whether there is culpability on the part of police. Kidnappers arrested, no announcement, no prosecution, no charging. You say you don't do further investigation, months and months. That's why they are emboldened. But when you set example, there is deterrent. In fact, the federal high court that under the Terrorism Prevention Act that has jurisdiction to examine that has a practice and procedure that cause accelerated hearing of terrorism cases. If you charge somebody for terrorism, it will be treated within a short time. It has enjoyed that privilege because it's a global phenomenon. And Nigeria cannot, at this point, afford to be behind. So I look, and, and President Bola Metinibu, quite frankly, is talking tough. So what we are going to be seeing in the coming days is the president's resolve to deal with what is not working. If as I'm is given to you, you're not doing it, certainly you will have to go and someone else will have to do it. Because when the minute one side is weak, it affects the other one. It affects the other one. Before you know, the entire system is weakened. We have all the capacities and capability to take action in this regard. And I don't see, I don't see why law enforcement agency of any kind will not take the certain decisions that is required for the purpose of nipping this in the board. Mr. So Shifora, President Bola Metedbu is committed to it. Right. Mr. Shifora, I'm not sure whether you saw a story of this, you know, some other civil society organization appealing, appealing to the Senate president to also expose a seven senator who is alleged to be involved in uh, sponsoring kidnapping and ransom taking in the north central and northwest parts of the country is also holding uh, heading a certain committee very important committee in the senate so i i know how difficult it might be for the senate to you know str uh, struggle to protect one of their own but how imperative do you consider them doing this ensuring that there is invest proper investigation done into this allegation uh, so as to regain the confidence of, Ni of the Nigerian people. All right, now this is it. I'm not a fan of um, things like this. There are agencies saddled with the responsibilities. Because, I mean, if, let's, let's play the devil's advocate here. If you go that route, tomorrow some, sets can, some set of people can come up and say and allege certain persons, and at the end of the day, that's the damage you're trying to prevent. I mean, we spoke about earlier on. Now, this is it. If there is anybody who is culpable for the act of terrorism, or you have found, you know, in that ring, Mr. Buala has explained it, it's a global thing. It's something that you'll be flagged anywhere, and every country is ready to cooperate with you because the effect of terrorism, it's not limited to one jurisdiction. And, I mean, we saw what they said, that some of those kidnappings are related to some of this sex from, you know, Kenya, Somalia, you know, trooping into Nigeria because of our porous border. So you've seen the effect of, you know, people rising from one country, coming and disrupting activities in another country. Now, so my take on your question is this. It's not the Senate that is in charge of investigation and prosecution. If there are allegations, there are agencies in charge. The EFCC is there, the police is there, the Office of the Attorney General is there, and other agencies under them. Now, under the AG's office. Now, so what you do is, instead of going to the Senate president to create chaos in the Senate, go to the appropriate agencies, 
present all evidence and whatever things you have in respect of that allegation, I can assure you the necessary agency will go after this person. Even if he's the Senate president, nobody has, beyond the president and the vice president and the governor and the deputy governor, nobody has any form of immunity from prosecution under the law. Now, so, so in that regard, let them go with the necessary information to the appropriate quarters and I assure you that the person will be picked. It's not, because some of those things can be political too. I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no, you know, the allegation, it's but the fact to. is this, let's not um, uh, disrupt activities. It's not the Senate president's job to come and hand over anybody to, you know, the lawyer. But, but I assure you that if a senator is found culpable uh, to, have, to be receiving money for terrorism-related activities, and then, they, I, I mean, the, the information is put forward to the necessary parties. I assure you, nobody is big, the, not even the Senate president is bigger than this allegation. And because if it's found out to be true, and then the Senate now tries to protect it, you will, they will create a wrong image for the country, for, for the parliament, for the country, and even for Africa. Now, because, like, I think Mr. Bwala alluded to the fact that terrorism is not a local thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a global thing. Now, so, and if, 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 if the parliament is seen to be protecting somebody, then you are creating the worst and the wrongest image for the country. So I don't think that's what is happening so, so, here. Sorry, so, Kevin. Right. So do you, do you think the Senate should react to this kind of allegation? The Senate will only react based on information available to it. Right. The Senate will not react to gossips or anything. But if, if there are concrete information, I can assure you the leadership of the Senate right. will get in touch with the necessary agency. All right. Uh, gentlemen, let, let's get one final word from uh, Dana Boala. We've, we've run out of time, uh, but then amidst all of this, there is um, you know, an announcement by AFCC that it will reopen cases of former governors, saying it's uh, dusting their files again to know what not to pursue and who to uh, further prosecute. Your, your final thoughts? Again, uh, comes down to the same point. So what, what is the essence of announcing we will reopen a case? <laughs> is it not to give room for those people who are involved to begin to interfere? <laughs> there is this thing called interfere with investigation. When it comes to intelligence sharing and investigation, it has to be kept under wrap. But when you make that determination, simply open the case and begin. Let the mercy, when you begin, it will be reported. EFCC has arrested so so and so in connection with so so and so so thing that happened. Because when it comes to criminal offense, most of the, those offenses are not statute, they statute by, you cannot stop them. You know, anytime you can bring up these cases against these individuals, EFCC must get its act right and stop the media thing. That with regard to that of the senator in closing, you see, depending on where the information or report came from, mm -hmm. if the report is from law enforcement, that we have done investigation and discover a senator from so so and so and so again that indicts them. Because when you have made the determination, even if the, if the person who is committing the offense is a Senate president, you can go and arrest him. The only time you cannot arrest is in All the right. plenary, in the uh, National Assembly. But once it's out, but when you, you, if the report comes from law enforcement, but you've not acted, Right. The civil society go to this place and are asking them to release that individual, then the whole thing now become politicized. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Daniel Boala and Olutubo Soshi for sharing your contributions on TVC Breakfast this morning. Always a pleasure. Yeah, appreciate it. All right. The D-Day is now here.